Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is uh, Shaquem Wynn, and I'm an independent filmmaker, independent comic book writer. Today, however, I'm not going to be talking about my projects. Today, I want to talk about the man who helped to make me what I am, who inspired to make me what I am, and the man who I think is getting a bad rap these days. Despite everything he did for pop culture, despite everything he did for entertainment, I'm talking about George Lucas, okay? You know, I'm here, you know, I just saw the new Star Wars trailer, uh, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. And let me tell you something, I'm not going to lie to you, the movie looks great, it looks badass, okay? Just from the little pieces that I saw in the teaser, it has the feel of Star Wars. But let's get one thing straight, okay? J.J. Abrams didn't do all of this by himself, okay? First of all, he did not create Star Wars. Star Wars was around when he was just a little kid. The man responsible for creating Star Wars is George Lucas. And from what I understand, upon doing research, George does have a hand in the new Star Wars film, Episode 7. He is doing a lot of consulting. You know, if you look at, the, if you look at any of the, uh, the videos with his son, his son basically talks about that, that he's collaborating with J.J. Abrams um, for the new Star Wars film. And to me, that's great because I'm going to be honest with you. I would not see this film if George Lucas didn't have a hand in it. To me, Star Wars is specifically George Lucas's vision. Because Star Wars is basically kind of semi-autobiographical. It really is. It's about a man, okay, trying to break away from the system, but ultimately gets caught up in that system. Because he becomes too big. That's the story of George Lucas. George Lucas was an independent filmmaker. You know, he was a maverick. He thought outside the box. And when nobody else gave him a chance, and when nobody else believed in him, he shocked the world with Star Wars. But then he became a prisoner of his own animal. You know? And to get away from it, he wanted to sell his company. But he still hasn't gotten away with it. He still hasn't gotten away from it because he's still consulting. You know, Star Wars is George, and George is Star Wars. Let's just get that straight. All these people that are saying, and you know, it's just, it's just the, the, the amount of disrespect, you know, fans have for George, man. It, it's crazy. You know, George Lucas raped my childhood and all this bullshit. That's crap. George Lucas made your childhood, okay? George Lucas is still making people's childhoods through the Clone Wars and this new Star Wars Rebels and all of this stuff. Star Wars is a myth for the ages, you know? So all these people that are, you know, hating on the prequels and all of this stuff, you know, like, I, I like how Kyle Newman says it. Uh, most of the people, this is, this is the director of Fanboys. It's, it's a, a Star Wars fan-made fan film, you know, but it was made by Hollywood. I like how he said, you know, most of the people who are bad mouth in Star Wars are people with fanny packs. You know, that's the truth because, the, you know, the Star Wars prequels. Because the truth of the matter is the prequels were not made for them. They were made for, for young people, you know, because Lucas understands that Star Wars is, is a moral fable. And moral fables are there to teach kids right from wrong so that when they grow, grow up, they'll pass, that, they'll pass those tales on to their children. And, those, and their children will pass those tales on to their children. Star Wars is a moral fable. It is mythology. And it's a mythology for the ages. So all these people that are hating and saying all of these kinds of things, forget about it, man. Because in 10 years, you'll be irrelevant. You know what I mean? Star Wars will, will belong to a whole new generation. It's, it's already happening. You can see it. Because the, the, the young people that are coming up now don't have a problem with the prequels. They love the prequels. Okay, they don't have a problem with Jar Jar Binks. They love Jar Jar. You know, and anybody that and anyone that can't understand why the prequels were made clearly doesn't have an understanding of storytelling. Clearly doesn't have an understanding of mythology. You know? I've watched episodes 
one through six. I watch all the episodes. And to me, every time I watch them, I find something new in, in, in Star Wars. There are so many layers. Okay, so the, the, so the actor may not be the best in the world, this and that. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. You know, I can deal with it. But some people, you know, complain, bitch and moan about it. You know, the acting is this and that or whatever. Uh, there's not a lot of action. Star Wars isn't an action film. Star Wars is not an action film. People need to understand that. You know, it's a tale of the hero. It's, it's, it's a tale about the rise and the fall of a great hero, which is Anakin Skywalker and, and his redemption at the end. That's what Star Wars is. You know? I don't know what people expect to see when they watch these kinds of films. Frankly, it pisses me off, really. You know? It, it pisses me off because I can't stand that kind of ignorance, man. You know, I really can't. You know? And I remember being in the theaters. I was in the theaters. Look, I'm 40 years old, right? I saw all the Star Wars films and the original Star Wars films, episodes uh, four, five, and six in the theaters. And then when I, when I became an adult, I saw episodes one, two, three in the theaters. And when I saw the prequels, I'm not going to lie. When I saw the prequels, I didn't hear a lot of hating and all this stuff going on. What I heard when I was sitting in that theater were claps, you know, were claps, was cheering, all of that stuff. I didn't hear any, you know, it's not until after they see the film, then they want to go and hate on it. You know what I'm saying? Which is, which is a hypocrisy to me, you know, because that's not what you did when you was in the theater. I remember specifically uh, uh, when Yoda went into battle for the first time in episode two, Attack of the Clones, how people was going ape shit over that. And yet, and, and yet years later, you know, these these adult fanboys want to be want to hate on that Star Wars film, saying it was not that good. Now, how come when I because when I saw the movie, I didn't see any of that. I saw people cheering, laughing, clapping, all of that, and I saw it multiple times at multiple theaters. Okay, and it always got the same reaction. You know, and I think just I think people need to chill the fuck out with how uh, they disrespect George, man. I really do, you know, because it's unnecessary. The man, to me, is a genius. He's a storytelling genius, man. And you know what, George? And this is a this is a message to George, man. If you ever see this or whatever, just know that not everybody hates the prequels, man. Some people do have love for them, myself included. A lot of people have love for them, you know. And don't worry about the haters, man. Star Wars will last. Far beyond, far beyond uh, these adult fanboys that are hating it now. And Abrams, if you're listening, bro, if you're listening, I hope, I hope um, your film is successful. But just come to understand, okay? Just come to understand, and I hope you understand this, that this is George's story. This is a continuation of that tale, okay? Star Wars is George Lucas, and George Lucas is Star Wars, and no matter what anyone says, you know, when they say, oh, I'm glad George Lucas is not directing it anymore, I'm glad it's going uh, to J.J. Abrams or whatever, you know, that kind of shit bothers me, man, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I like J.J., man, I do, I like what he did with Star Trek, hell, I even like what he did with Super 8, and that's probably his most personal film. You know, a lot of people hated it, but I didn't, I actually liked it. You know, it reminded me of the Goonies and all that stuff. So I didn't have a problem with it. But understand, it's still George's vision. And it always will be. You know, Star Trek is still Gene Roddenberry's vision. People still have to follow the Bible that he set forth. You know, they still have to follow those rules. And when, and when it's time for George to pass on, that's what will happen with Star Wars. You know? That's what will happen with Star Wars. People will have to still stick to that canon. And as much as people hate the prequels, as much as they do, the prequels are still canon. It is still Star Wars canon. It's still part of that Bible that George Lucas created almost 40 years ago. So y'all need to get that straight. And y'all need to respect what he's done. 
You know, how can you like episodes four, five, or six, and not ever like episodes one, two, or three? When when episodes one, that's like you saying I only like one half of the story. You know, that's like you saying I only like one half of that story. That's bullshit. You know, the story fits. Watch and I and and I'll challenge anybody. Watch episodes one through six, and you will understand that Star Wars is a complete story. You know. Episode 7 might be good. I'm not going to hate on it or whatever because it looks good from what I saw in the trailer. But to me, it's a cash grab. It's a cash grab. It's just, you know, Disney's way of creating more movies for, from Star Wars because they believe it's going to make the money. And that's okay. It's a, you know, filmmaking is a business and I get that. But understand what I'm telling you. No one can ever step into George Lucas' shoes. You know? Star Wars is the first, you know, oh yeah, you know, you had the Planet of the Apes and all that stuff before it, but let's get one thing straight. Star Wars is the first, the absolute first great film series. Before there was Harry Potter, before there was the Lord of the Rings series, be, you know, even though the books was out way before Star Wars and, and, and the, the books influenced George and stuff like that. fact of the matter is, as a film series... Star Wars was the first great one, man. It was the first great one. It was the first one with universal appeal. Okay? You go around the world. You mention Star Wars, C-3PO, R2-D2. Everybody knows who that is. And that comes, from the, that comes from the genius mind of George. Okay? George Lucas not only... And, and it's not, I'm not even talking about just entertainment alone. I'm talking about in terms of literacy and all of this stuff. You know, George Lucas introduced, you know, when everybody else forgot about him, George Lucas introduced um, Joseph Campbell to the world through the Star Wars films because they're all based on Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. They're all based on that. You know, he, he influenced countless people to write, to direct. I'm a filmmaker now because of George Lucas. I'm, I'm an independent animator because of George. I do comic books. I write stories because of George Lucas. This is how, this is how far of a reach this man has had in almost 40 years of him uh, being a filmmaker. Or, or him uh, or since the Star Wars films came out. Because he was a filmmaker uh, over 40 years. But, you know, the Star Wars films is almost 40 years old. It's not quite there yet. But this is how this is how far a reach this man had. He influenced he influenced more people than I think anybody in the history of entertainment. And I'm not just and I'm not just talking about the films. I'm talking about what he's done with technology. We wouldn't have the great special effects today if it wasn't for George Lucas. We wouldn't have the great sounds in theaters if it wasn't for George Lucas. You know, he he helped create all of these things. He set all of these things in motion. And to hear that kind of disrespect. Coming from so-called fans, man. That shit really bothers me, man. You know what I'm saying? You like the man you you like the man 30 something years ago. Why are you hating on him now? You know? Because you think because you think he's old now, because you think he's not relevant. That's bullshit. Man is still relevant. The man is so relevant that 40 million that 40 million people downloaded or view, or viewed that trailer, that new Star Wars episode seven trailer. On, on YouTube and so forth, because that's all based on his material. So don't hate the player, hate the game.